Hey everyone, I'm Alex and I'm a sales engineer here at Plaid. In this video, I'm going to tell you a little bit about our assets product and show you how easy it is to integrate it. In this video, I'll cover the following topics. I'll start with an overview of assets, then I'll cover the front end and back end integration. Finally, I'll go over the additional features that Assets offers. First, a quick overview. Assets is at the core of Plaid's lending offering, helping lenders improve their underwriting process by giving borrowers a seamless way to share their financial data in seconds. Assets works by returning a snapshot of bank account information in what we call an asset report. For each bank account, an asset report returns the account balances, historical balances, and up to two years of categorized and normalized transactional data. This data is commonly used to verify a borrower's asset balances or to evaluate their credit worthiness based on their cash flows. In addition to this bank data, Plaid will also return the name, email, phone number, and address of the borrower associated with each bank account. This information can be used to verify the bank account belongs to the borrower. Next, I'll show you how the front-end integration works. Like all of Plaid's products, Plaid Link is the front-end module required to allow a user to connect their bank account to your application. To kick off the assets work stream, simply include assets in the product parameter in your Link token create call, and Link will take care of the rest for you. We also recommend including a webhook URL so Plaid can notify your app when an asset report is ready. Now I'll show you what the typical Link experience looks like for the assets product. As you can see, it's a standard Plaid linking flow where the user selects their financial institution and submits their credentials. Since assets is intended for decisioning use cases, an additional disclosure is included that allows users to view specifically what data they are sharing. Once they complete this step, they've successfully linked their bank account to your app and the rest of the work happens on the back end. This diagram gives a high level overview of how the backend assets integration works. Like all Plaid products, the first step after a user successfully connects their account is to exchange the item's public token for an access token. The next step is to call the asset report create endpoint with the access token or tokens for the borrower. This will return an asset report token. Then just wait for Plaid to send you a product ready webhook. Once you receive this, the asset report is ready for you to retrieve. Now I'll go into each of these steps in a little more detail, starting with step two, creating the asset report. The asset report create endpoint requires you to specify two things. First, the number of days of historical transaction data you want included. And second, the access token or tokens to be included in the report. Unlike other Plaid products, Asset supports aggregating multiple Plaid items into one report. This way, you can prompt the borrower to connect all of their financial accounts via Plaid link and then bundle them into one asset report. And here's what the asset report create response looks like. Plaid will return an asset report token and asset report ID. Persist these securely and associate them with your borrower because they'll be used later to retrieve the asset report and identify webhooks. Now that you've called the asset report create endpoint, it's time to let Plaid go to work and for you to wait for the product ready webhook. Once the report is available, Plaid will send a webhook with webhook type of assets and webhook code of product ready. The webhook payload will include the asset report ID, which you should have persisted from that last step. Also worth noting that if you try to retrieve an asset report before the webhook fires, Plaid will return a product not ready error. Now we're at the final step where the asset report is ready to retrieve. Simply call the asset report get endpoint to fetch the asset report in JSON. Alternatively, you can also call the asset report PDF get endpoint to retrieve a more human readable PDF version. And that's it. We've now covered the entire integration and you're ready to evaluate a loan application. 
In this last section, I'll cover a few of the additional features that Asset supports. This first feature is what we call Assets Insights. By default, Asset Reports return historical transaction data exactly as they appear on the borrower's bank statement. Alternatively, you can have Plaid normalize and categorize this historical transaction data by setting the Include Insights Boolean to true in your Asset Report request. This can be particularly helpful if you plan to surface the transactions back to the user or if you want to better understand a user's spending patterns by category. This next feature is called Assets Refresh. Asset reports are immutable, but if you need an up-to-date report, for example, in a long origination process like a mortgage, or if an existing borrower wishes to refinance, you can generate an up-to-date report by calling the Assets Report Refresh Endpoint. As with the Asset Report Create Endpoint, the report will be ready to retrieve once Plaid sends you a product ready webhook. And lastly, Plaid also supports sharing asset reports with third party partners like Fannie Mae and Aquilus. To do this, call the audit copy token create endpoint and specify which partner you're sharing it with. Plaid will return an audit copy token, which you can then share with your third party partner. They can then go on to use this token to pull the asset report on your borrower. And that's it. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, check out our assets documentation in the description below.